Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today we're going to look at something sort of revisiting that we've seen before. What I've got here is the Behringer X32 Compact. You may remember I reviewed the original Behringer X32 last year. I really, really liked it actually. Well, the Compact is sort of the next one down in the line. They've got a variety of X32s. And the difference between this one is we only get a block of eight channels here and then we get our subgroups. And this X32 larger one, we had this full sweep and then an extra eight on the end. Now, uh, obviously, what's been happening sort of behind the scenes since then is uh, Behringer has not been resting on the laurels. They've been working on a version 2 operating system, which is going to enhance uh, uh, and add to what I thought was already a pretty compelling set of features. The first thing you're probably going to want to know is how do you load it on? Is it easy? Well, the answer is yes. All you've got to do is download from Behringer, stick it on your USB drive. I've got one stuck in here and then press the access button and power up at the same time. That means uh, it loads up, boots up, and then it's loaded into RAM. You don't have to do that every time. Uh, fair to say, the, the, the version that I'm loading now is not the final, final release. There are still other aspects being worked on, but there's a whole sort of, it's public access. You can get hold of it and you can load it onto your system. Another question you've got bound to ask is, will it load my presets? The answer is yes, uh, although perhaps the first betas that were being loaded didn't have uh, the ability to read uh, existing presets. Like So when I had the X32 last year, I saved everything onto this USB stick so I could load it back if I ever got another one in for review or ended up purchasing one. So yes, it does. So I loaded my entire show thing, uh, my, my show scene, which has all of the different scenes in it and all the presets, the routing and extra, it just came straight back up. So what else do you get in version 2? If you're an X32 compact user, you're in luck because the first thing that you can do is utilise this subgroup section. Uh, normally this would be DCAs, bus 128, 916, matrix C or sends on fader. With the X32 compact, you can now assign this side to be channels as well. So if I hold down 128 and press 9 to 16 as well, I've got 1 to 8 here, 9 to 16 across here. Or for instance, if I want 9 to 16 on this side, I could then maybe go to my effects returns on the right side. Or uh, 9 to 16, 17 to 24. It's actually, what it means is you get more use of the real estate. And if you're a compact user, obviously in a live situation, you can see more channels at the same time. That's actually pretty handy. Another big deal is you've got the ability to lock the console. So again, if I come to my overview here, perhaps I'll come in a bit tighter, I can press and hold the home button for two and a half seconds and the console becomes locked. So that means, uh, for instance, if I, anything I do here, I move my faders, I can do all of this stuff, it makes absolutely no difference to what's happening on the left and right. If I unlock the console, it all comes back to the way it was because, you know, in certain situations, you, if you have to leave the desk for any period of time, aside from it being turned off or actually somebody physically unplugging things, you know, it will stay in the same state. So for installations and unmanned things or, you know, where you don't want anybody tweaking any of these parameters, pretty useful. Another really big deal is the addition of RTA, real-time analysis across all channels. So if I go to my uh, stereo channel, uh, master bus output. Uh, I've also got a little DAW uh, set up with some returns of some drum and bass stuff, so I play that in there. You can see, I come close up, that I've got an RTA analysis of the whole thing. If I also go to meters page, I can, uh, I've got, as well as my meters, I've got a larger format RTA, and I can see much more clearly what's going on with the frequency. I've also got the opportunity to set the defaults here, you know, the, the channel EQ defaults and the graphic EQ defaults because I get a graphic overlay for our, uh, graphic EQ as well. The other thing that's quite cool is if I go to my kick drum and I solo that, and then come back here, uh, I go to the EQ page, I can look at and see what it says, what it's doing pre and post EQ. So in terms of just seeing what's going on in terms of frequency, that's really handy. I mean, maybe ringing mics out or whatever, but it's something that we've had in the DAW world for a while, and that's a very welcome addition. While we're on the subject of EQ, if I come to my bass channel here, uh, solo, press play, I've got the ability to reset individual bands of EQ here by pressing this button. Come down to the next band, off, and I do that by just selecting it in the EQ, on, off, on, off, on, off. Continuing on the EQ front, we've also now 
got EQ on effects returns, which is something and another addition as well. Another thing for coming to setup, uh, and I scroll across to scribble strip, uh, which is one of the really cool features I like about the X32, the fact that we've got the ability here to put in icons and text and colors in these each of these little windows has got an LCD, so it makes it very visual and easy to use. Uh, we can also now, as well as having additional icons, we can invert the background color. So by pressing that, we can go sort of the negative so it enables me just to add an extra layer of sort of visual cueing to the whole thing. There are quite a lot of other tweaks that have gone on, I'm not going to be able to go into all of them here but suffice to say uh, they've been thinking about this quite a lot. Uh, perhaps a few highlights, um, it's now possible to route to the XLR outputs directly from input so we don't need to use up a channel, bus it and then send a bus to one of the XLR outputs. That's handy for routing all sorts of things to all sorts of places, particularly when you've got the AS50 and external stage boxes that we can pass them through to other places. Another uh, issue is we've got MIDI. MIDI has been implemented, uh, well, to a great degree, because previously we only really had the ability for the DAW remote. Now it's possible in the MIDI configuration page to send and receive faders, pans and mutes so we can control our faders externally or receive them. We can switch them on here. The other thing that we've got is the ability to check the MIDI control uh, from the dedicated input and outputs. We can have it over the card, so perhaps over USB. Unfortunately, RTP MIDI is actually greyed out here, so it's not quite available yet, but it's something that's definitely going to be coming. Uh, as well as the receive and transmit program change faders, transmit, mute and pan, we've got something called XOSC, which I don't know too much about it, but I'm told it allows you to create custom system exclusive MIDI messages uh, that will allow you to access individual parameters. But again, this is a little bit arcane. I don't have any experience of that, but that might open it up a little bit more. But uh, one of the sort of largest areas of um, overhaul uh, the devices and the effects. One of my real favorites is they've added freeze to the vintage room um, algorithm. Now this may not seem like much, a very small thing, but those of you perhaps who've been watching my recent videos might have noticed that I've, uh, I've been enjoying that quite a lot because the thing about freeze on the, the vintage room, it does look very much like a quantum room simulator, which is an old Australian, it was a quadraphonic device, but it has the, uh, the actual hardware was a particular sound. You can create sound on sound. So I've got this hooked up to um, Ableton. I'll bring out my little keyboard here. Uh, let's, yeah, I've got a few things here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable the freeze button right here. Now I'm gonna bring up the send. So you can hear that's just held. Now let's bring up another note. Let's perhaps go down an octave. I've just got this beautiful wide pad that's just frozen in reverb. You can see there it is on the meters. And now I can play over the top of it. Or maybe add some extra notes. Okay, that's probably not going to get many of you excited in terms of live sound, but for me, you know, putting synthesizers into this and creating these sort of lush pads, from a studio creative point of view, it's fabulous. So if I just read through and uh, what they've actually added in terms of effects and then overdub the sort of screens, you'll be able to see actually that what's going on here, they've created these sort of quite uh, artistically enjoyable representations, almost like VST plugins effectively. And these are all running on the internal DSP. So what we've got is um, three new reverb effects emulating Lexcon 4ATL rich chamber room and rich plate programs. Now these are kind of high grade studio and live uh, sort of Upper, upper crust kind of old school reverb algorithms. Multiband compression with several automatic features. Emulations of vintage compressors such as Fairchild, Teletronics and Euro 1176 LN. Uh, this is sort of standard fair, you know, the stuff that we expect from pretty much any DSP platform now. These are kind of staple 
vintage kind of compression systems. Emulation of the Roland Dimension D for all you 80s fans out there, that's a, a bit of a classic. Uh, dual sub, Octava, an emulation of Sonic Maximizer effects. Edison stereo field controller with mid-side input and output options. Now another really big overhaul that's happened is the way that the patching is uh, um, set up. So we've got the familiar scenes page, but we've also got this new page called Snippets. And what Snippets are, are the ability to store small subsets of data as individual um, memories that you can recall sort of from within a scene. So it doesn't change everything, but it can change an awful lot of things. And you can configure it to a very high degree. You've got parameter filters here, so it can affect all of these different parameters, specific channels, returns, buses, matrix groups. There's a heck of a lot of things that you can configure and you record those there. And they can also be stored in the scenes or in this queue list. So that scenes and snippets can all be assigned to these queue lists. So if you send a program change on channel one, you can change the first 100 scenes. If you set it on channel two, you've got access to the 100 snippets and they can be recalled separate to the scenes. Uh, program change on channel three to channel six will give you the first five, five, up to 500 cues. So you've got lots and lots of possibilities there. Let's say you wanted to use not maybe a compact, but you could use one of the X32 racks, run your entire band into it, have the whole thing happening. You know, if you're using computers on stage, the mix could be dynamically happening here and maybe have a couple of uh, controllers for faders and mutes, you know, live mics, you could actually run the entire show off an X32 rack and MIDI control and cue lists. I'm guessing this is going to be a really big deal if perhaps you were using this for theatre use where you've got lots and lots of cues and changes to radio mics and all sorts of things happening that could be triggered off time code based events into MIDI events, then this is going to be something that's going to be incredibly useful to you. So I haven't been able to cover everything. Um, there are a couple of things. Uh, at the time of uh, doing the review, I couldn't get the iPad app, the remote control app, to work with this version 2 software. Although I did speak to Behringer and they said that they're just about to submit it to iTunes and it should be online, perhaps when this is published or shortly afterwards. So you will be able to have the same level of control via the iPad. Uh, the other, other thing is, obviously, you've got to bear this in mind, this is a free download, so you haven't really got anything to lose. Obviously, you'd want to back up everything before you did that. Uh, and also, perhaps, if you uh, are not an X32 owner, some of these features and functions might make you consider that it's a worthwhile purchase. Uh, if you want to find out more about the X32, we did publish a couple of reviews. There'll be links in the show notes. I might try and put a couple of fancy buttons here and here to those. So please do check those out. But from my point of view, this just sort of reiterates the, uh, my initial feelings, which is I think it's a great digital desk, perhaps more suited to the live environment than the studio. We still haven't seen a great deal of the uh, promised interface cards out there yet. I'd really like to see some of those particularly sort of an ADAT interface would be very useful so we could externally digitally sync this to a DAW or whatever but that's not really a review of the version 2 software. So that's it thanks very much for watching please do subscribe we do appreciate it there'll be a button here uh, also there are links above and below the player um, increasing the numbers I'm trying to get one of those uh, YouTube 100,000 subscribers plaque so please do help me out anyway thanks for watching see you next time.